Hi, and welcome back to Hacker 101. This is the first in a series of three videos on the basics of mobile application testing. In this session, we're going to go over the basics of testing mobile applications, from the different types of apps and basic setup to some key bits of testing methodology. The following two videos will discuss the specifics of testing on Android and iOS respectively, and we'll be diving more into the setup of specific tools at that point. For now, let's learn the fundamentals. First and foremost, take a nice deep breath. Mobile testing seems very intimidating. It requires a lot of setup, there's a lot to learn before you get started. However, it's really not as hard as it seems. In fact, if you're already comfortable with web hacking, you've already got a pretty substantial leg up. Many of the biggest mobile app bugs are really just web bugs in disguise. So why test mobile apps? After all, there are plenty of web apps to hack on out there, and with how important our mobile devices are to our daily lives, there must be a ton of people looking at these already. Well, that's just not the case. Few hackers are knowledgeable about mobile testing, and there's a ton of low-hanging fruit. While that's a big problem for all of us mobile app users, it means a big opportunity for hackers like you to make the world a more secure place. Let's start with some base knowledge before we hop into actually getting started with testing. First things first, let's get acquainted with the different types of apps as it pertains to testing. Up first, we have pure native apps. These are typically written entirely to use the native UI toolkit and usually written in Objective-C or Swift on iOS and Java or Kotlin on Android. This also includes most games, though many do include web views for things like authentication. That being said, pure native apps are the least common type of app by far. The majority of apps include some web views. Next, we have hybrid apps. These are some combination of native UI and web views. This is the most common type of application. It's the easiest to develop, and in large part, they're easy to test. Conveniently, many of the web vulns you're most familiar with will apply here. Finally, we have web wrappers. These are exactly what they sound like. The app entry point just opens a mobile-specific web application in a web view. These allow for a ton of code to be shared between your standard web front end and the mobile-specific bits. In the case of these apps, effectively every common web vulnerability applies. We'll talk about the exceptions later in the session. It's also important to know about the various hybrid app frameworks that are in common use today. Most of these allow for development using JavaScript, HTML, and CSS without really being just a web app. These are things like Cordova, PhoneGap, and Titanium. The nice thing here is that it's really easy to pull out the code for the whole application, with the exception of any little bits that might talk to native APIs that aren't handled by the framework itself. The details for doing this vary wildly between frameworks, so we won't talk about this here. We'll publish some resource links on the Hacker 101 website for that. Xamarin also usually falls under this umbrella, but it works a little differently, allowing for development of cross-platform mobile apps using .NET languages like C-Sharp. On iOS, this gets compiled down to machine code ahead of time, which makes it effectively impossible to get decent source code out. On Android, though, the .NET assemblies, the actual compiled code, are just stored as part of the application bundle, and you can get nice, clean C-Sharp code out of them. We'll have resources for dealing with this on the Hacker 101 website as well. And lastly, before we dive into the deep end, here's a short list of languages you should know for mobile testing. Regardless of what you're testing, you're almost certainly going to need to know JavaScript. As mentioned before, most mobile apps contain at least a few web views and JavaScript is super relevant there, not to mention the hybrid app frameworks I was just discussing. In addition, Objective-C and Swift are essential for iOS testing, and Java is essential for Android. It also wouldn't hurt to know Kotlin for Android, as it's being used for many newer apps, but it's not critical. All that being said, picking these up enough to test them effectively isn't hard, and it doesn't require you to be an expert in them. You really just need to be able to get the gist of what the code is doing. Well, let's dive in. Let's first talk about something very important, target selection. Before you can start testing an app, you have to actually find a good one to test. This isn't an inclusive list, and these aren't the only things to keep in mind, but this is a starting place. First, apps that use a large number of web views or are just wrappers around web apps. If you're coming from the web hacking world, these are going to be the easiest starting point by far. Next, applications that expose lots of functionality in talking to servers. I know that's a vague category, but a great concrete example is Uber. In this application, you have account management to ride requests, to ride history, and everything in between. 
at each point where the application talks to the server, there's an opportunity for bugs. Finally, an area that I've personally found a lot of low-hanging fruit is with games that include a leaderboard. These leaderboards are often vulnerable to everything from stored XSS to SQL injection. Are these going to be the most impactful world-changing bugs? No, but they're a great way to learn the ropes. Once you've picked your target, your next goal should be to get source code. If the original source code is available, that's awesome. If not, follow the guide for your platform to decompile the app and get something resembling the original source. This isn't always an option. For iOS in particular, this option is rarely available, but when you can do it, you should. Finally, if you're coming from the web world, you already know this, but you need to set up a proxy. I always use Burp for this personally, and to do this, you simply go to the Proxy tab, the Options tab, then click Edit on the first proxy listener. Set it to listen on all interfaces so your test device can access it. Consult the iOS or Android Quick Start video, which follow this one, to see how to install the CA certificate and possibly disable certificate pinning. Certificate pinning is where the application ensures that it will only open an SSL connection to a server with a known good server certificate to prevent man-in-the-middle attacks. The details of this are out of scope for the video, but most mobile apps should have certificate pinning in place for security. If it does, you'll need to disable this to make your proxy work. If it doesn't, well, this is often a valid bug in itself. Well, now you're ready to actually test. How do you go about it? We're going to talk about some bits of testing methodology that you can apply. Not all of these will be relevant for all applications, but they do provide a good starting point. First, look for your standard web bugs. SQL injection, indirect object reference, improper authorization, or lacking authentication. These are things that often appear in the web services that mobile apps hit. As I mentioned earlier, most web bugs appear pretty much unchanged in mobile apps. The few notable exceptions are improper cookie flags or scoping. As I'll talk about momentarily, cookies aren't very important in most mobile apps. Reflected XSS. These can matter, but you need a plausible way for an attacker to get this in front of a user. For instance, a redirect. Get creative here. And CSERF. Again, it's rare that an attacker can take advantage of this in a real-world setting. Next, check to see how credentials are stored. If it's possible to save credentials used to talk to a server, the application should be using the system APIs, Keychain on iOS and Smart Lock on Android, to store those securely. Often these will either be stored on the file system in plain text or poorly encrypted. We'll talk about the latter in just a moment. Look for insecure connections. Essentially, all connections from the mobile app to web services should be via HTTPS. If you see plain HTTP connections hitting your proxy, this is almost certainly a bug, or at least hints very strongly that one will exist. Some mobile applications will send a session token along with every request to a given server, regardless of whether HTTP or HTTPS is used. Thus, even if unimportant data like banner images or product thumbnails are sent over HTTP, this creates an instance where an attacker could get the session data off the wire in plain text. Look for embedded secrets. So many mobile applications embed everything from web service secret keys to encryption keys because their developers feel that attackers won't be able to find the secrets embedded in binaries. This just isn't the case, even when decompilation is unavailable. If you have decompiled source code, then this is an easy one. Simply grep around the source for things like key or secret. If you don't have the source, then I suggest using the strings command, which typically ships as part of GNU bin utils on most Linux and Mac machines, and is available for Windows. That will find anything that looks like a string inside a given binary, and you can filter down from there. Secret keys for web services will stick out like a sore thumb, as they're frequently stored and sent as either a long hex string or base64 data, and they'll generally have some string like service key near them in the string's output. This is more of an art form than a science, but once you get the hang of it, you'll find these bugs everywhere. As I mentioned previously, some mobile applications will send session tokens in the request headers, as cookies aren't typically used for session keeping like they are in web apps. A well-behaved mobile app will only do this for HTTPS requests to known good servers, but a portion of them will send this session token with every single request that goes out. If you're able to cause a redirect to a site you control, like via an open redirect within a web view, you might be able to get a user's session token and take control of their account. This isn't super common, 
but some mobile applications contain secret development or debugging interfaces. These can allow for things like switching to connect to test servers, tracking all communications, and more. These don't generally lead to bugs directly, though I have seen them contain a function to let you switch to any other user account. But these interfaces can simplify testing, so they're worth looking for. Additionally, they may reveal endpoints inside the internal network, like the testing servers I mentioned, which could be used to escalate things like SSRF bugs, if the scope permits it. It's also worth just looking through the data the application stores. Both iOS and Android have application-specific locations where they're able to store data, and these often contain cached data, some of which may be highly sensitive. This is a source of low-hanging fruit in many applications. Check for insecure crypto and hashing. This is particularly easy if you have source code. A great many mobile applications use hand-rolled crypto systems, often for data at rest or to obscure communications with the server. Often these rely on hard-coded keys, insecure cipher modes like ECB, or known bad algorithms like RC4, DES, MD5, depending on the situation, and others. If you aren't already familiar with testing and breaking these, check out our video series on cryptography. It's a personal favorite of mine, and it's incredibly useful for mobile hacking. And finally, check for screenshots when switching apps. When you switch away from an application and it goes into the background, the system will take a screenshot to show in the app switcher. These screenshots get stored in plain text on disk and can reveal things like account numbers, transaction histories, and more. To test for this, simply see if any sensitive data is present in the screenshot when you switch away from an app. Obviously, this only matters for sensitive applications like mobile banking interfaces, but this is an easy win in those cases. If you made it to this point, congratulations. You're well on your way to becoming a mobile app hacker. If you haven't done so already, consider giving the video a like and subscribing to our channel for more content. As always, thanks for watching and happy breaking.